In this next set of videos, we are going to be looking at a fairly simple subdivision design. We'll do maybe 20 lots, 30 lots, give or take. Uh, we'll design the corridors, we'll design the lot grading, we'll do some underground utilities. All within the City of Calgary and to the City of Calgary design standards, which are all located on the City's website. And we'll look at that in a few minutes here. What I have on my screen here is just the previous surface we used for the simple highway design set of videos. So I'll put the link for this in the description and I've gone and deleted the majority of the points. So any of the points kind of within the area I'm highlighting here, I've gone and deleted because to be honest, we don't need all of them for that. So I've inserted all the points, I've created a surface and then I deleted the points and I'm just going to rebuild my surface here so we can see it shrink down. I'm going to change my surface style now so we can better see the contours. And I've simply drawn just a quick shape for the subdivision design just to generally lay it out. I have some road center lines here and then I ensured that there was at least 34 meters between these two lines and 83 meters between these lines. Now again, you could just draw a simple shape for this and and if you make it have a, a T intersection and at least one corner, then we can design a knuckle and a T intersection along with a cul-de-sac. So again, just draw a simple shape for this. It's nothing fancy. The points will be on, I'll provide a link to those and we can get going on this. Now, when we're designing a subdivision, especially within a municipality, there are design guidelines laid out for us that we definitely have to follow. So just on the City of Calgary website, I'm on the Planning and Development Resource Library. I'm going to scroll down to Technical and Design Specifications, Design Manuals and Guidelines, and we will be following the Design Guidelines for Subdivision Servicing 2014 for our design. I already have all the pages open that we need to access. So on page 85 is our cross-section residential street with uh, attached walk, attached sidewalk, no back lane. On page 89 is a standard cul-de-sac design, or actually we'll go up to 88, standard cul-de-sac design. And down on page 97, corner radiuses and corner details. There is no set standard for knuckles, however, but we'll just draw one in. So we'll keep this document handy. Back to Civil 3D now. So I've got my center lines laid out. I have a general shape here. Again, I'll try and link, um, create a drawing of just this here and, and upload it as well and provide that link in the description just so you can follow along. And it will be geo-referenced as well. So I'll do that too. The first thing we need to do is establish our road right of ways. So how far from the center line, these red lines, are the edges of our roads? And not just the edges of the roads, the property lines to go with it. So on the city website, we're gonna take a look at this road detail. We see that the paved asphalt surface is eight and a half meters and the remainder of the road or the entire property line of the road edge to edge is 16 meters. So we'll cut this in half four and a quarter so we can establish our road edge. And then we'll take this 16 and divide it by two to give our property boundaries. So all I'm going to do is a simple offset right now, four and a quarter. I want to offset this to that side here to here. And like that, and I'm going to start trimming and cleaning up some of the line work just so we can establish our road edge. And then I'll just change the style of this and change the style so we can see um, the difference here between everything. So we'll make the road edge cyan, the paved asphalt edge. And then if we offset the rest of these lines, eight meters. This one is already offset by eight, or it's just a little bit over eight, so we'll do that anyways. I'll offset that by eight. We'll offset that and that as well. And I will turn these lines themselves green. And again, put these on proper layers. It'll just make your life a little bit easier. 
I'm going to zoom in and delete that one there because it was slightly off. And then I'm just going to match some properties from there to that line. And then delete that little bit down here. And then again, trim everything out, clean it all up so you're not confused. Try and make your job here as easy as possible. That's not letting me trim it. Oh, now it is. And we'll just check the one up here. And everything is good. So once we have our road center line laid out, we have our pavement edges, and then we have the right of way itself. We can start designing any cul-de-sacs, any knuckles, inside corner radiuses for the city, etc. So we're going to go back to the city documents and just look at the cul-de-sac details. And we're going to purely follow the minimums here. So lip of gutter, radius 10 and a half minimum. And then the other two, the in incoming angle is a radius of 21 minimum. We're just going to follow this. So 10 and a half and 21. So I'm going to draw a circle based on my center line. Uh, radius of 10.5. And I'm going to draw two circles, 10, 10 radius. And again, this is edge of road, tan, tan radius of 21, TTR, from here to here of 21 as well. And we'll trim those out. And we'll clean all this line work up. Again, when you're trimming circles, it sometimes does work, sometimes doesn't work. And as we see right here, it's not working. So just give it one more try. And it works. Again, maybe depending on what you're selecting, it does or does not work, but we'll just get that cleaned up. I'll turn those lines cyan again, just so we can see the road edge. And then finally, I'll join them into one polyline. I might have to make it a polyline first. Nope. So we have our polyline here. Now, we need to include a right-of-way for the cul-de-sac as well. So I'm just measuring the distance 3.75, and if we look at the detail as well, we can see 3.75. I'm going to offset this outside cul-de-sac by 3.75, and then I'm going to take this green extension line and bring it down and tie into the end of these arcs. So I've now established my road edge, my pavement edge, and my property line boundary for my cul-de-sac itself. Now any inside corners, so here, here would be a corner, this would be a curb, a curve in your road, so you don't crash into it. There'd be another one over here. And those are the three we're gonna be worrying about right now. So if we go back to the documents, we'll make this full screen, not that page, but this one here, corner radiuses and corner details. This will tell you the radiuses that these curbs need to be. Now if we scroll down and just take a quick look at the details here. If we have bike lanes, if we don't have bike lanes, it will help you decide. We'll probably go for an RN type. We have no on we don't have a parking, we don't have expanded lanes. So this will be just a straight curb, corner, curb. So look at the RN column, and then we need to know what kinds of roads these are. Different roads have different requirements. So for a local street to neighborhood boulevard, we'll need different radiuses. However, we are a residential street right now. So I'm going to scroll down to the residential street area. Residential street, no bike lane. So right here, minimum seven pavement width. So we are a residential street to a residential street, which means our RN needs to be a minimum radius of nine, or we're going to do, actually do nine. So I'm going to fill it, radius 9, these two cyan lines together, these two cyan lines together, and these two cyan lines together. So I'm starting to create my road edge. Now, when you're designing a knuckle, 
we also have to pay attention to certain radiuses and we're going to keep this nice and simple we're going to make the road edge i believe um, a radius of 18 meters for all three and then we'll offset from there and we'll see if that works now that radius of 18 is actually on the right away and then we'll just have to do a, quick, a little bit of math or we can create those 18 radius circles and offset them back inwards so I'm going to draw a circle and I'm going to draw from the apparent intersection of these two lines. So it's where these two lines would intersect before we filleted it. I'm going to do a radius of 18. I'm going to do a circle again, tan tan radius from here to here of 18. And likewise on the other side, TTR again, TTR 18. And then I'm going to go trim these up and clean them out, or tr uh, trim them out and clean all this line work up. The same way I did above. And it looks like uh, trimming circles again. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And in this case, it does not seem like it is letting me trim some of these out. So maybe if I do it in a different order, possibly. So, okay, let's me trim that one. And this last one is just not wanting to work. So again, um, I'll get that line work back and then I'll be right back. All right, I've gotten the line work back. And the reason I couldn't undo it is I've removed the undo command just because it causes problems in Civil itself. So I'm gonna see if I can accomplish this a different way. I'm going to break this circle we'll say from there, and then see if my trimming works. So that lets me trim it out. And how about this? No, that still does not let me trim it out. So my guess is these are actually not touching even though I have told them to. So let's see if I can grab this edge and go apparent intersection of that line in there. No, that will not work either. So again, doing circles, a little bit of a pain. We can try deleting it. Maybe I'll extend this. We'll draw another circle, TTR. We can try an arc too, but I've had more luck with TTR. And it's still not letting me trim that out. So we'll try a parent intersection again. Ah. No, it's not working. Okay, I'm just gonna trim it off at the quadrant of the circle. And again, you may be having the same issue. We'll trim this off based on the quadrant and then I'll clean that line up as well. And then I'll delete that. And then we may have to break this line because of just the problems we were having with that bit of an arc. I'll join that to there, and then I'll join this one to here. So we've established our outside knuckle. We are now going to offset this by 3.75 again, offset 3.75 to establish our road edge. However, I highly suggest joining these together first. So we'll join that, we'll join that, we'll join that. Make sure it's a polyline. I'll delete this road edge that we created and then I'll offset this by 3.75. And then I'll just match properties, properties to turn that cyan. So we have now established our road edges, our property lines, and our knuckle lines here, as per the City of Calgary standards. Now again, on knuckles themselves, there really isn't a set of requirements. It all depends on your frontage and kind of what you want to see there. However, we're not going to design lots on this side just to keep it a little simpler, but the same learning will be applied to above the, the uh, cul-de-sac here. So again, setting out your road edges, setting out your property lines. The one last thing we do want to do is to chamfer the edges of these before we go and start creating our lots. We do want to chamfer these. So I'm going to chamfer based on a distance. I'll try three and a half and see what it looks like. 
and that looks good to me. Champ for this and champ for this side. This is so we have place to put the sidewalks uh, to go around the curbs when we do design them in. So that was part one of the video, this video series. In the next uh, video, we'll create some parcels on these. And then we'll move into creating corridors and lot grading, underground utilities, etc.